Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Our purpose on this tape is to show the construction of a mouth guard. Some of the variations and techniques uh, that can be used in its construction. We're going to use a material state guard. This is a rather common material. It's uh, one that is used primarily and principally for athletics. Not only have we got a lot of football laws or laws concerning football that are requiring it in our high schools, but it's used pretty well throughout the football athletics, also used considerably in hockey. I've seen fractures result in uh, basketball and wrestling, and of course it's been used in boxing for many years and uh, used in a variety of sports. It also has some other uses, and this uh, involves youth as a retainer for fluoride, for some home fluoride programs that are in existence in some of the prevention practices today. It can also be used as a night guard for some occlusal and bruxism problems in uh, certain instances. In the construction of this now, it's easiest if we have a simple model, one that just involves occlusal portion of the teeth. In pouring these up, if you're pouring it uh, specifically, it's just as desirable to pour only the occlusal portion and not to pour the whole model. It saves on stone and just makes it easier. You have to be sure that you've got enough so that it doesn't fracture when you take it apart and uh, uh, so that you haven't got a lot of grinding to do when you get it apart. Uh, Easiest technique in doing this is to use a vacuum sweeper or some type of a vacuum suction. Here we've got just a plain Electrolux uh, vacuum. Usually most offices have some type of vacuum. Uh, in my particular office, I use a uh, uh, vacuum from the uh, vacuum mixing, the whip mix uh, vacuum. Uh, most any vacuuming mechanism uh, works quite well. And an ordinary shower head, or there's boxes or a variety of different uh, uh, gadgets that have holes in the top that uh, can be used. Now with this particular material, the State Guard, it's, it's softened by heating. And you can place it in some boiling water. Almost any mechanism that uh, boils water, electric fry pans or compound heaters or any one of many things, leave it just for a few seconds. You leave it too long, it becomes difficult to work with and it gets cloudy and uh, what have you. Usually, depending on how well your water is boiling, 15, uh, 20 seconds. Many people handle this by hand. I haven't got quite the, that tough a finger, so I use a tong. Practically any tongs will be adequate. If you want to assure that you don't get sticking, you can uh, uh, use a little Vaseline on it. If we place our model on top of our shower head and turn our vacuum on, just a matter of taking this material when it's in its warm state, laying it down over the shower head, it generally suctions or vacuums right down over the head. After we've done this, uh, just a matter of letting it cool. We frequently will take it off the shower head or disconnect it and hold it under some cold running water for 30 seconds or so. After this is cooled, we can take it out and trim it. Usually it'll just flex out here and uh, we can trim it back. Let me point out to you approximately where we want this trimmed before I trim it so you can be watching on it. Port, most important area is to make sure we've got the labial freedom area freed. And basically we'll trim it so that we'll come down in the anterior labial part then up for the buccal freedom area again and around towards the posterior. Now in the palatal area we cut up rather close to the uh, lingual palatal surface, the posterior teeth. We come down into the palate and leave a little bit further and away from the teeth in the anterior, back up around on the opposite side. Now in trimming this, you can use a pair of scissors. Most any scissors will be valuable. A little heavier scissors is helpful. Uh, these claws plate shears make a nice scissors to trim with. Basically to begin with, I just cut the excess off. By having the palate out here to begin with in our model, this makes it a little easier to trim the palatal area out.
again keeping fairly close to the teeth on the lingual posterior area, gives a little more freedom for the tongue. After we've basically trimmed it out, then we'll go back and make sure we've got these buccal and labial frenum areas freed. Particularly the labial here, that's the strongest frenum area. Now if you have not got this freed, what is likely to happen is that you're going to get a cut into the frenum and the person won't wear it when they should. So we've got to make this comfortable. I sometimes will tell the patients, you know, that uh, if this does cut them or something, they can trim it themselves with a little pair of scissors to make it comfortable. Or if uh, need be, we're happy to do it ourselves again. Now in smoothing this out, uh, sometimes uh, we can get a little bit smoother if we want by placing it back on the model and flaming the edges of these. Now this isn't always essential, but it's certainly desirable to help make this as comfortable as we can. If we take this and take a flame, you can use most any type of flame, an alcohol torch that's frequent in most offices is helpful, and just run this along the edges. And uh, you'd best dip your fingers in a little bit of water before you go to touch the edge of this or you're liable to get a little warm. So just, again, this just smooth and rounds the edges off for it. Do this pretty much all the way around if you like to get a real fancy finished model. Or a mouth guard here. Sometimes the students will get a area that's sharp and bothering them and if you just warm it a little bit and kind of press it down, it uh, seems to blend right in and takes care of the rough spots on it. These can also be made on full models. The full model happens to be all that you have available or you used it on a restorative case or a study model or anything. Uh, they can be made almost as easily with the full model. With the full model, you may have to take and help to adapt the pallet down because it don't get quite as good a suction as you would if you had just a small portion of it. So you can take and help adapt the pallet down on it. You can see it uh, makes almost as good a suction in the mouth guard, but again, we'll let it cool. This is a mouth guard we've just cooled. There's a couple of disadvantages to making it on a full model. One is it makes it a little more awkward to trim. The second is we didn't get quite as good a suction on this. If we look at it, we'll find that the central fossas and our occlusal grooves didn't suck down quite as good. And if you can get a comparison on the two here, you'll find that the occlusal anatomy just isn't quite as detailed. Certainly satisfactory or adequate, but uh, not quite as good a quality. Now, if you don't have a vacuum available in the office and you want to make this on a model, whether it be the pre-trimmed model or a, a study model, this can be also done just simply by adapting it by hand. I'll adapt one of these for you, get you an idea how it should go here. Get our material adequately heated up. If you have a little cool water to dip your fingers in, sometimes that's helpful. Just simply lay it on and then adapt it down with your fingers. Now in, in adapting it, it's desirable to not adapt heavily onto the occlusal surfaces, but adapt more onto the buccal and palatal surfaces of this to get it adapted into place. If you put a lot of pressure right over the occlusals, you have a tendency to thin the occlusals, and uh, this makes for some problems with the students or whoever's using it chewing right through it. Basically, this would be all that there would be in hand adapting it. Again, you're not going to get quite as quick, easy, as simple, or as perfect an adaption as you would with your vacuum adaption, but it certainly makes, again, an adequate mouth guard, although not the exact quality you'd get from the other. Again, we'll just let this cool. Our stay guard material runs about 10 cents, or I should say a dollar a sheet. And uh, we can conserve on this by some mechanisms. If we were to take and uh, cut a small section of this off, and they say that you can make between four and five sections from one sheet by doing it this method. I make about four myself. And if we heat it up, and I've got some heating already, we can take and adapt this also by hand.
I'm adapting this by hand. It's a matter of just taking it, turning it on here. Cool your fingers with a little water again. Take it, press it down into place. This gives you less to trim off. It also uh, gives you the same disadvantages we talked about before as far as your adaptation. But again, don't press very hard on the occlusal surfaces or we'll thin it out. Just cool and trim again. If you'd like to suction one of these small sections down, which again will get you in the range of uh, 20, 25 cents uh, per sheet on the material, we can heat and lay a piece over here and then take a embroidery hoop with a piece of rubber dam stretched over it and set this over the top of it to help us get our suction. I've got some heated up. I'll suction a piece down for you. It doesn't have enough suction power by itself, but you put the hoop over the top of it, and adapt it down if you want any, and particularly in the palatal area there. It'll give you a nice guard. Just let it cool again. After cooling, we can take a look at it and see that it's adapted down here quite well. We've got the advantage of a nice vacuum uh, adaption, and uh, we're using a smaller amount of material. I'd like to take a moment and show you a couple of the problems that can be in existence here in finishing these down. One is if in flaming these down, we use a carbon flame, a yellow carbon flame. We'll frequently get black into the surface of these. And actually, you soften the surface down, deposit the carbon right in it. And we don't get the clear color that we would like. And if we use a clear flame, then we'll just avoid getting the carbon in there. One of the advantages of these is they are aesthetic and that you can see the teeth through them. So if we blacken them, we get into a problem. If you leave them too long in the water, we can get into a problem because it has a tendency to get frosted and turn white. So again, we should probably be, depending on how warm your water is, if it's boiling, probably just 15, 20, 30 seconds at the most. And we can avoid getting the frosted color on it. Some of the other problems that uh, we can get into uh, have to do with trimming. You can see on the heels here, we have trimmed this with the model trimmer. Any place on the model that's been trimmed with the model trimmer, we have to cut away. And on this one, I've trimmed one of the tuberosity areas back. And the other one I've kind of left the way that I see some of them sometime, and that is hanging over the uh, trimmed portion of the model. And this actually has to be trimmed off because this doesn't exist in the patient's mouth, and it's just going to be nothing but a uh, irritant in there. In selecting your models for taking uh, and making your mouth guards on, we have to be careful, number one, that we haven't got fractured teeth. If fractured teeth are in the patient's mouth, that's all right, but if you fractured them separating the model or something, we're in trouble. If you take and uh, trim some of the teeth off when you're uh, trimming up your model, again, we just haven't got what's in the patient's mouth and we can't use it. If we've got a, an area where we've got large voids, uh, again, the mouth guard material will go into the voids and it won't seat when the patient puts it in the mouth. Even if you haven't trimmed the teeth, but you've trimmed some of the model back, we're going to have to either cut our mouth guard free from that model or where we've trimmed or else avoid it. The construction of a mouth guard with the stay guard material is a relatively simple procedure. It certainly helps to know some of the tricks of the trade. and We've tried to show you a few of the modifications and variations that are in existence with the making of these mouth guards. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.